did had to sign a will the other day and shit like that. Like, mm. just like things like this, it's like you don't really realize it, especially in a civilian world. Mm. But once you enjoy the military world, it's like, yeah, man, I can fucking die like <laughs> today, tomorrow, mm. like. Something that's real fucking really happening, and I always thought about it before I joined the military. It's like, I'll fucking I'll go fight in a war and this and that. Yeah. But then once I join the military and I'm learning about fucking war and what needs to be done, the precautions that need to be taken. It's like, it's like wow, this is a real thing. Like, mm. I can fucking die today. <laughs> like, no <laughs> problem. Yeah, you could have <laughs> like, died at any other moment of any other day you live too. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And it's like. It's like, holy fuck, I didn't really realize it until I was in the military, but yeah, babe, like, I was telling you the other day, I was looking at the ground on the conservatory, and I was like, that's death right there, like, yeah. that, that's really literally, sick. like, I'm not looking at that like it's fucking, uh, some beautiful greenery grass, like, yeah. that's me falling if I, uh, see that grass in ten mm. seconds from now, it's because I fucking <laughs> just fell in them. Either paralyzed or dead. It's like I don't know. Fucking. Well, it's just it's. I definitely have moments of uh, pause on the roof as well too. Like when you're hanging off the edge, yeah, putting on like, drip edge or something, and you're just looking at that. And you're right, man. You you aren't seeing nice grass. You're seeing death and and every the amount like the anchors holding the spikes are in good. The rope is good. The yeah, clips exactly. on the rope is good. So the clips on your harness things. is good. Everything is working properly to hold you up on that roof. But if any, even one of those things fails, luckily we always are doing inspections on the gear. My sure. main thing. But if the thought goes through your head, and like so, there's some days where I'm hanging, like some days I'm fine. But then there's other days where I can't stop thinking about the anchor coming out for whatever reason. <laughs> and I just can't get the idea of falling out of my head. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I'm sitting there and then I'll just like take a second and just, you know, literally. Yeah. Every, I, I I start thinking about how I should have been kinder to that guy at the coffee shop earlier who like kind of cut me off or something or yeah. or you know just all these things. It's like start ser- you start to, uh, at least me. I start to seriously reevaluate my actions and mm. and how I want to make you know. Then I eventually I set foot on the ground at the end of the day or on lunch break and I'm just walking around on the ground. And I'm like. <sighs> I made it. I, 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 made, I still am alive. I'm here. And I'm and obviously, being in war would be way crazier than that. Like that's fucking tame. Like oh, day in the office like... compared to a war. But, you know, it's nonetheless like you know, don't miss those opportunities to be humbled. That's for sure. Definitely, especially like it's we're in the position right now. Like I was saying earlier. We're in this position because fucking guys really fucking struggled. People really struggled mm-hmm. to get us here right now. And it's mm-hmm. like, don't fucking, don't take that for granted. Like, uh, I hear it a lot in the military too. Don't take my happiness or don't take my kindness for fucking granted. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like. From like your superiors? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, do your job. Like, yeah, fucking. I don't know. Work, yeah. work, man. Just work. and that's it. And like, like I was saying earlier too. Like I fucking, I work three jobs and I'm fucking still behind on rent right now. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> we live in a difficult part of the country. Too, but, uh, but at the all same the more time, to get after. yeah, exactly. <laughs> at the same time, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't change it to go move to a different country and fucking have a different struggle over there like yeah. well that's the other thing I think isn't mentioned enough is like you're not gonna not have a struggle yeah mm-hmm. definitely you have exactly. to embrace it yeah, and this is what life. hit me when I was so when I was in BC I turned 23 I just got done um well not done but I was in the middle of backpacking across the country and I'd spent like the past at that point five or six months doing it with like no money and I was just I was celebrating my birthday and so I was journaling on my birthday uh, and uh, I did a bunch of acid to ring in the new year of my <laughs> life and reevaluate everything. And and th- and that that trip honestly was one of the most pivotal like shifts in my mm-hmm. attitudes. Like I mean, it was always because um, like when you're going through life, at least I find that it's maybe a year passes and all these different things happen to you and then like just somehow in a moment of reflection all those lessons coalesce into like this big realization that like took months or years to really kind of 
marinate and mature in your psyche or something. Or, crystallize. Yeah, really, yeah, crystallize. That's yeah. the perfect word. Yeah. And <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, the, lights, the light turns on, finally. And yeah. so, I was just thinking about, when I was 22, I was journaling on my birthday, and I was just planning the trip, you know? I was like, where do I want to be a year from now? I want to be on the road. Mm. And then, so there I was. Uh, a year had passed, I was turning 23, and I was on the road, and I was in the thick of it, and I literally... What the it, uh, the year previous, I set a goal. I set uh, my sights on what I wanted my future to be, mm-hmm. and it it came to manifest in my life. It, mm-hmm. I absolutely made it happen. It felt great, and it was and uh, but uh, you know, until I, I I felt good when I realized that. But I was actually going through a pretty heavy like down depression kind of uh, phase at the trip of, at that point. I mean, I was going through a good couple weeks there because I was had this house to myself in Nelson, BC, and I was dog-sitting, and it was just beautiful in the mountains, and mm. I was dog-sitting this giant Great Dane chocolate lab mix named Chunk, <laughs> <laughs> who had just gotten fixed, so he was really drugged up and trying, had to keep on stopping him from chewing on his nut stitches. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I was thinking about, yeah, this is exactly where I wanted to be. <laughs> but, um... What struck me about it was how it was like the whole idea that like the grass is going to be greener on the other side is a complete lie. Yeah. You know, you can even if you manage to think up the most perfect situation for yourself and manage to execute a plan that gets you there and it happens, you're still going to have to face struggle to get there. It's still yeah, going to be a struggle to do it. And you're not going to be totally elated and blissed out the entire time. No. And <laughs> what good would that be anyway? I had to go on about that like integration of Ice spiders and shit like that. It's oh like yeah, that. I got an article here by the way. We can get into. It's that. like, uh, like I was saying, yeah. It's like, how bad can it really be that you want to go fight against your own country? It's like you're switching your struggles for almost. I could fucking argue an even harder struggle. Mm-hmm. If you want a fucking war. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and here's the thing. So I'll I'll just kind of interrupt. Sorry. Uh, sorry but, uh, <laughs> so this would be uh, an article that would support the more liberal point of view I think uh, kind of contesting what you're saying Dylan or maybe an answer to the question so let's just I don't know let's make up a quick hypothetical situation that maybe this kid's had a hard life you know no parents or whatever maybe he's an orphan maybe he's in gangs maybe he's had a really rough time maybe, or she um, but I feel like perhaps a boy would be more likely to do something like that Yeah, and um and so, you know, perhaps this kid has every reason to hate the whole world. And then, so, just listen to this article. Um, he had been in Syria for almost, this is, a, the article's titled, What Happens When an ISIS Member Returns to Canada? The Story of One Toronto Area Man. Um, he said, he had been in Syria for almost six months serving in the mor- mor- morality police of the so-called, I wonder if that's supposed to say military police. It says morality in the article, but mm. uh, morality police of the so-called Islamic State. When oh, he just, they, they probably are a thing. I think morality police of the Islamic State means uh, a police officer who uh, enforces Shia law. Yeah. Oh, like Sharia the Sharia, law, the Sharia, Sharia the Sharia inspectors for like the ISIS yeah, control yeah. areas. What's yeah. that? The what's the What's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically okay. Sharia law is um, it's kind of jihad is like a form of thought in like a Muslim culture. I don't want to fucking speak too much about this, but I'll I'll just, just say yeah. Just explain the the term. Yeah. Yeah, jihad is a form of thought that was brought upon from uh, the Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. and. Jihad is essentially this and that, and there's laws that are based behind this that mm-hmm. state what you can and can't do. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, so once you practice jihad, you're practicing, uh, um, it's essentially, and this is the thing, too. You get ISIS fighters who believe in this shit, mm-hmm. but you also have Muslims, like my roommate's girlfriend's Muslim. Mm-hmm. You don't, she doesn't believe in jihad at all. Like, uh, so there's two different mindsets on the topic, but yeah, once you practice jihad, you're essentially practicing uh, like the girl fucking wears their head drove and fucking you cheat on your spouse, you get stoned to death, like mm. that type of shit. So that's like Sharia rape? law. It's like okay. 
how you act too in public a lot to do with that and how you present yourself here's in a question about Sharia law is it only enacted when uh they, uh, the you know group of Muslims in question considers themselves at war or whatever, and is that why like it's just always yeah. all the time kind of like okay, what are yeah, like no, equal it, yeah. to like martial law? Yeah, in in a, in a sense. But, I don't know. I mean, I know because I know like we'll look that up next. I know there's a um, I know there's a just a plethora of Muslims who like do not give a single sweet shit about any of the clearly you know. Not like so, the, not so great elements of like you know yeah. the, the Quran and stuff, but like it's, it's the same thing with Christianity, you know. Totally, like the, totally. obviously, exactly. it's off, like, like Christianity, it's like uh, Jesus said, to "You fucking you yeah. can't be gay," and you know what I mean. You yeah. got fucking radical Christians who fucking hate gay people and who who hate black people. It's like you can't put the whole Muslim. No, you can't do it. You can't, that's, you that's, can't say well, they're all just, like ISIS I've, fighters and shit yeah. like that. Like, definitely no. Exactly. I fucking have superior officers who are Muslim and fucking mm. pray every single day to Allah. And they also have been over in Afghanistan and fuck guys who think fucking this way. And, mm. You know what I mean? It's like they, f- they, they have the same religion, but they're not thinking the same. I mean, I don't agree with... I was raised Catholic, and I don't fucking agree with the Ku Klux Klan or anything like that. <laughs> obviously, like mm. yeah, exactly. It's, I think anyone can, anyone who falls victim to just sheer indoctrination, one hundred percent of the written law is what they act out. They don't, you know, interpret anything on their own or act from their own like conscious soul. You know, like it's mm. just you are totally operating from a from words in a book 100% of the time that's just yeah, fuck it's yeah. bound to not go well <laughs> I can only imagine mm-hmm. so anyways this kid he was in ISIS for 6 months fighting for the morality police and acting this law uh, in Long State he decided he'd seen enough the recruiters had promised an Islamic utopia I think that's an important point because like so it shows these people were in conversations with like ISIS fighters in the Middle East and, and so like, these are like you know, disenchanted youth, perhaps, who are easily radicalized, and then these people show up and they're just promising them, like, this Islamic utopia where they'll fit in and belong and everything will go perfectly, and probably lots of virgins or whatever the hell, money, <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever they want. You get to be a war god of some kind, or who knows what they're promising. But, mm. you know, so say it's a young kid, like, in that kind of a situation, and then these people are trying to sell you on this Islamic utopia. He says when he gets there, it was, a cr- it was just a cruel police state, one he wasn't willing to die for said he was frightened and disillusioned. He wanted to go home to Canada. He left the city of Ma- Manbij, M-A-N-B-I-J, during the night, taking a motorcycle north to Jerabulis and crossing into southern Turkey where he was arrested and deported. All that's behind me, the Pakistani-Canadian Alanki in, in his 20s told Global News in an interview after returning to the Toronto area last summer. Mm. We all do things we regret, quote, then we, yeah, there are said to be dozens like him across Canada, returnees who have spent time in terrorist groups then call home, and then, and with ISIS collapsing in Syria and Iraq, more are expected to turn yeah, up. Yeah, well, what really what, do you what, expect, what, though? What did like, they uh, <laughs> Well, it, so well you're you gonna gotta go wonder, man. Fight with them. <laughs> are, like, I don't know, religion has a lot to do, religious beliefs has a lot to do with, like, uh, Fucking motives, obviously. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's why military that, yeah. usually does not have any fucking mili- or, uh, religious beliefs, except for fucking like Israel or some places mm-hmm. like that. But anyways, the sense or the point behind that I'm saying is uh, like, what do you really expect if you're going to join an army with an actual uh, religious belief and a motive to fucking kill out anybody else who doesn't believe in that religion? Mm. Like, well, this is a good thing to mention because it's like if, if I mean, fucking whoever happens to be listening to this, if. If somehow it winds up reaching the ears of some kid in that situation, it's like, no, you aren't going to some crazy Islamic utopia. You're going to a place that is hell. <laughs> I'm sure, like, too, if they could have one-on-one contact with a uh, member as well, too. Obviously, you know, they yeah. do do that. That's the reason of them fucking figuring out where they're going and who they're meeting up with. But I'm sure that person who they're speaking with is speaking good on their behalf. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. 
If they're not fucking telling you. Probably like, manipulating them. Who knows? It says here.